Hello everyone, welcome to the pre-recording of the Graphics Programming Virtual Meetup. So this uh, topic is the book releasing the next week, chapter 4 to 6, where we will talk about textures in our retracer. Chapter 4 is about simple solid textures, and chapter 5 talks about putting noise as a noise texture, and Finally, chapter 6 talks about image textures. Let's first talk about solid textures. First, we need an interface for textures. And textures are basically a function that takes a UAV coordinate and returns a color. The book also in the book, the texture also takes the 3D um, point in the space which is used for, for the noise texture. So this texture class can both be used as a 2D texture and 3D texture because this function takes both the 2D coordinates and 3D coordinates. For the solid color texture, it, it only just contains a color and its value function will always return that color. And we also need to change our heat record to give us back the UV coordinate of the intersection point. And then we can pass that UV coordinate to our texture function later. How to get the UV coordinates? For sphere, it's pretty simple. We uh, have uh, theta and phi as spherical coordinates, and then then it's really easy to get uh, u is uh, phi divided by two pi, and b is um, theta divided by pi, and both of them are normalized to a range of zero to one. Oh, sorry, negative one to one. And this, this is not in the book, but what we are doing is called Mercator projection. Basically, we, we put our texture as a, a cylinder and then project that cylinder into our sphere. As you can see, the two poles of uh, of our uh, sphere gets distorted quite a bit and the next step is to calculate the sphere spherical coordinate for first we can get the 3D points x and y and z then by, by some high school maths, we know x is cosine phi, cosine theta, and y is sine phi, uh, cosine theta, and b is just sine theta. And then doing some algebra, we get theta is arctan of y divided by z, and phi is arcsine of x. So here is a function. Uh, the input is uh, 3D point P. And then, then we calculate uh, U and B according to the previous formula. And for the textual coordinates of the spheres, we just use the get sphere UV function we defined before in our intersection to set the UV coordinates in our heat record. Finally, we need to add, uh, add textures to our materials. And in this case, we store the pointer of texture in each material. And for checker texture, which contains two textures in a checker pattern, 
we just store two textures and then use the sign function to uh, alt alternate between the odd and even texture. If then if we add some checker texture to the scene with one color being almost white and another color being almost, uh, way darker, then we have this part this pattern where we have almost white texture and uh, green as a checker pattern. And the book also has another scene with this uh, checkered texture where it only contains two spheres. Since now the, now the book starts to have multiple scenes, it's, we change the mean function a little bit, and then we can toggle between different uh, scenes. And this is the result of the second scene. The next topic is noise texture, which is a common thing in shader programming, but we can also do it in CPU retracing. And what this book will talk about is perlin noise. Early noise is different from white noise, which is totally random, like this picture. But white noise does not look very pretty because it's totally random. But instead, early noise are more like blurred white noise, where adjacent point can we can see continuities of colors for adjacent point. So the first step to get the pretty noise, we can use blocks of random numbers. So we just segregate the 3D space into different blocks. And we can have a Perlin class that contains a three array of um, uh, points and each point contains a floating point value as as a as a color, and then then in the uh, data members we just uh, we just store that array plus three permutation arrays. And then for the generating Perlin noise function, what we do is permute the permutation array um, First we use an iota function uh, loop to generate 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, and then we just randomly permute in, in C++ standard library, there is a function called uh, shuffle that exactly does that. And with that Perlin class, we can use noise texture. We can have a noise texture that use the no Perlin noise to get, to get a 0 to 1 a range for each point we passed in. And with that, we add that noise texture into our scene. And since, since we have our search thing, we also change our main function and we get this kind of random looking you know, te texture patterns. But this, 
we use we segregate points into uh, segregate three distributions into fixed grid. Our textures are looks like a grid. So what we will do is smoothing out the result by using by linear interpolation inside a cube. And then we get this smooth result. However, we can still see the rectangular pattern inside this uh, image. So the next thing we will do is to improve the result by permission smoothing, which is a common technique used to smooth this kind of noise. And then we get some subtle improvement. It does look a lot like the previous image, but if you compare them side by side, you will find this image is a lot smoother. The next step uh, we will do is tweaking the frequency of our noise because the frequency of the previous noise is too large. Sorry, it's too small. And we we want to we want to adjust, uh, adjust them inside the noise texture function. So we add another scale uh, data member into our noise texture, and so we can adjust them when we construct the noise texture. Then when we create a noise texture in our two polling spheres, thing we just pass four as a frequency. And then we get much better results. But yet our thing still looks very rectangular, even after all the uh, adjustment we did before. That is that is because our our range of pretty noise always uh, number always is from zero to one. So what we will do next is instead of using a fixed floating point value, we will use a three D random vectors instead. We will fill that vector and then use dot products to get our final magnitude of that point. And this is the main trick of early noise. As, as we can see inside the noise function, we, gen we generate a point and, and then use the and inside the inter interpolate, it be becomes a little bit more complicated to accommodate the fact that uh, we are currently generating a point instead of just uh, generating a vector, sorry, vector instead of just a floating point values. And with all with all of that, we can do some final tweak and we get this nice smooth scene. The next step for us is, is to add some turbulence. That so in in uh, usually when we use pretty noise, we will accumulate different noises with different frequencies together to get some kind of uh, fractal-like patterns. And we call this turbulence. So we will introduce this by a for loop. And then we get this result. Finally, we also want to adjust the phase of the turbulence because the previous uh, the previous noise texture have the turbulence too large, and we we just want to turn it down. So finally, we get this next result. And 
And the final thing we will talk about is image texture mapping. For image, uh, it is quite straightforward. We need to convert image space into UV space, which went from zero to one. So we just normalize the uh, IJ of image coordinates by the base and height of the image. And uh, um, to use image texture class, we use a library, the book uses a library called uh, STB image. It is a C++ uh, or C header only library where you can load an image into an array of bytes and just use them. For the value function of the image texture, we just do the calculation we said before. And then, then we can use this earthmap.jpg as a text, uh, test image, and then we will use it as an image texture and project it to a sphere. And since we have our fourth thing of Earth, we need another case in main, and we get this nice image. Thank you.